groups, I wanted to make sure that we took a look at uh, uh, how the difference between uh, lipid-based and, uh, and uh, polar molecules in a hormone into the cell. So you want, I want you to be able to compare and contrast uh, the difference between the two. So let's take a fast look uh, review of uh, the endocrine system concept number two. Hormones and other chemical signals bind to target cell receptors, initiating pathways that culminate in a specific cell response. Right, that's a very important concept to make sure we remember. Remember the three classes of molecules. What's the importance? Well, uh, polar molecules uh, need uh, help entering a cell. They need some sort of method, mechanism to get into a cell uh, past that uh, phospholipid uh, bilayer membrane. Whereas steroids or uh, anything derived from fats are nonpolar molecules and therefore uh, they just glide right through that uh, membrane. Uh, you have to remember too that uh, signaling uh, to any of these molecules involves three key events. Uh, one is reception, the second is signal transduction, and transduction is just a movement and a response. Uh, and the last is, is what that response is going to be. So, uh, for example, a signal transduction across a cell membrane uh, might involve uh, changing a genetic uh, uh, response. Maybe it reconfigures a protein uh, that's being made. So um, that's what we're going to take a look at. So here we go. If you take a look at the polar molecule, right? There's some neurosecretory cell or hormone cells secreting hormones into the bloodstream, and there's the target cell. And the first orange band would be that phospholipid. Uh, head and embedded in that phospholipid head in that membrane uh, which we call the fluid mosaic um, many many proteins of which one of them is going to be or some number of them are going to be targets for the particular hormone uh, in this case it's just labeled signal receptor and you see that the target cell um, the hormone attaches to the target cell well the target cell passes that hormone into the signal transduction pathway, uh, which is a reconfigured protein of some sort or molecule of some sort, which uh, enters uh, through either the, into the cytoplasm uh, and then has a response there, or actually into the DNA uh, right through the nuclear membrane. And again, that nuclear membrane is nothing more than a phospholipid bilayer. So the action is going to take place in one of two places in the cytoplasm where proteins are being manufactured, or in the nucleus, uh, where that messenger RNA is being dispatched uh, into the cytoplasm, into the ribosomes to be manufactured in new proteins. Uh, the protein receptor, right, that's the, uh, uh, once it's inside the cell, it carried, has carried the hormone inside the cell, it is, uh, oftentimes acts as a transcription factor in the nucleus and it coordinates or regulates the transcription of specific genes to, that will then build specific proteins which will then have a specific response. And remember this happens all with the aid of enzymes so the process is extremely rapid. Well nonpolar molecules uh, can pass right through the fossil of the bilayer cell membranes and some of these are steroids and the thyroid hormones and the hormonal form of vitamin D. They just enter the cells directly and they're binding to specific protein receptors, again, inside either the cytoplasm or the nucleus. Okay, just a quick review. The water-soluble soluble hormones, they bind to membrane receptors on the cell membrane. Uh, specifically, what happens, the binding, this process of binding activates a G protein that activates a specific uh, uh, enzyme, in this case, uh, dentalite uh, cyclase, and this helps convert ATP to the second messenger of a C amp or a CAMP. Right? And remember, C amp is just uh, uh, adenosine monophosphate, not uh, adenosine triphosphate. So the, we start out with adenosine phosphate and we release energy and we take two phosphates off uh, to bring it down to uh, AMP, which is uh, monophosphate. 
and this process activates a protein kinase to regulate enzyme action in the cell. So that's the process that uh, a water-soluble hormone takes. Well, if that's what a water-soluble hormone does, what does a lipid-soluble hormone do? A lipid-soluble hormone is diffused right through that phospholipid bilayer uh, of the target cell membrane and bind to receptors either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. The activated receptor then turns genes on or off, uh, thus regulating the synthesis of a protein. So this is a process that a uh, lipid-soluble hormone uh, would use. Uh, my honors class needs to make sure that they can do a compare and contrast question. Uh, any questions about this, come see me tomorrow and we'll go through it again.